welcome all of you chirpers out there. Thank you so much for joining us for the second episode of our how to begin beginning backyard birding series. So today we're going to focus on how to find feeders for your feathered friends. So let me go through a few bird house rules. So you are part of our team today. So we're going to ask you some questions. We're going to identify birds together and have a ton of fun. So post in the chat throughout the presentation. We love to hear from you. So let's do a little practice round. Go ahead and post where you are joining from and your favorite bird. Great, it's so exciting to have you guys joining us today. And don't forget, last time we had a lot of questions. So this time we're gonna have a Q&A session at the end. So if you have any questions, you can post them in the chat as they come to your mind, or you can save them for the end of the presentation and we will do our best to answer as many as possible. And here's the best part. So if you take a short quiz at the end, we will you will be entered in to win a grand prize. And today you can be entered to win a free featured item that's going to be in our tutorial today. So let's go ahead and get started. Right here and right now is Randy, the owner of Chirp, and he's here to help you make your backyard birds happy. Take it away. Today we're going to talk through another important element in backyard birding, selecting and maintaining bird feeders. Also today, Joy is helping keep us on track so don't be alarmed if she suddenly appears. Here are a quick overview. Here is a quick overview of what we will be learning today. First of all, step number one, the types of bird feeders and what birds they attract. Step number two, where to place your feeder. Step number three, feeders and the various seasons. And step number four, how to keep your feeder clean. So we will get started with step number one, the types of bird feeders and what birds they attract. And I'm gonna go over a breakdown of some of the most popular bird feeders. First off, probably the most common is a tube feeder. I have an example right here. This is a six port tube feeder. It holds seed in, are you ready for this? A tube. And it's usually made from clear plastic. Sometimes it's made from metal mesh. The cap on the feeder keeps the top clean and dry. There are feeder ports, um, depending on how big a feeder you have, there may be as many as a dozen feeder ports um, on the sides that also function as perches uh, for the birds. They come in different sizes. And we typically will fill these with sunflower seed, safflower seed, and other seed mixes. This is a good entry level feeder for the backyard. This one's only 20 bucks. And if you buy it at Chirp, you get three pounds of starter feed for free. A second variation of the tube feeder is a thistle or Niger feeder. This one is a specialized feeder specifically for a very small black seed called Niger seed. And uh, the mesh here allows it to hold the seed and then the birds somehow, I don't quite understand how they do it, they're able to pick the little tiny seeds out from this mesh. I have one of these in my yard and on a feeder like this, I've had as many as 10 goldfinches just climbing all over. It's great fun to watch. Next up, we have a hopper feeder. Probably the second most popular type of feeder. This here is an example of a hopper feeder. It is equipped with a, again, hopper um, or a chamber that holds seed um, you can see we have one of our little friends uh, trying to feed out of it. Um, the roof keeps the seed clean and dry. The chamber dispenses the seed uh, here onto a platform where the birds perch as uh, we just saw. It holds a large amount of seed, uh, typically requires less frequent filling, and it holds a good variety of seed, again, a good entry level feeder for the backyard, comes in all different kinds of shapes and sizes. This one happens to be made out of 100% recycled material. It's very durable. We'll talk about that in a bit. Next up, a platform feeder. 
This beast right here is what we call a non-exclusive bird feeder, meaning all different types of birds can uh, come in here. It can be mounted on a pole, on a post or a rail. Um, it can even be put on the ground. The, the roof here protects the feed that you would put on the platform. And also an important function of it is it protects the birds. Uh, birds are sensitive to uh, hawks and other uh, prey birds that might fly over or come down and pluck them off. So it's very comforting for them to have some type of shelter overhead. This one has a perforated screen at the bottom that uh, helps prevent rainwater from accumulating or uh, snow, helps keep the seed dry. You can fill this with almost any type of seed. It's especially good for things like peanuts, mealworms, uh, or fruit. All right. So that was the platform feeder. Next up, we're going to enter the wonderful world of suet and suet feeders. Here is a very basic suet cage. These are very inexpensive. I think this is like five or six bucks. Um, this will hold, it would hang like this, and it holds a suet cake. You can get suet cakes in all different kinds of flavors. Um, suet is a high energy bird food, if you didn't know, that birds enjoy year round. And it is uh, made from typically rendered uh, fat. And it is especially beneficial to the birds during the winter months when other food sources are scarce. But birds will enjoy this uh, year round. Suet also comes in different other forms like logs or bricks, but the most common is a cake like this. Suet feeders themselves can come in different forms like, this is one of our favorites. It's designed to look like a swing. Uh, it's actually a suet feeder and you can put two suet cakes uh, right here in it. And you can also, use a suet log like this, where you can put uh, suet uh, balls, cakes uh, inside there. Uh, or there's another handy suet cage. This one has suction cups and will mount to a window so that you can get up close uh, to the bird action. Suet feeders are a lot of fun and again, an important source for birds, uh, especially when it gets cold. Okay, next, cylinder feeders. Cylinder feeders are designed to hold seed cylinders. Here is a holder. <laughs> and here is a cylinder. And you put the cylinder on the holder and end up with something like this. This feeder is great for observing birds um, because the birds take a bit longer to pick at the seeds uh, and they're easy to assemble. They tend to create less mess um, and it's just an easy, convenient way to feed birds. Also, you'll notice this has a place um, along the base for birds to perch um, or they can directly cling to the cylinder. You can also stack these um, one on top of the other. There's a hook on the bottom. So you can have a whole bunch of these lined up uh, if you like in a row and really create a feeding frenzy. All right, so those are the standard feeders, but there are also some variations to keep in mind that help us perform specific feeding tasks and uh, perhaps keep certain undesirables out like squirrels. So here is an example of a squirrel proof feeder. This is um, a classic uh, squirrel buster. This one's the mini version. And it is designed so that when you have weight on it, like our little friend here, it actually closes off the uh, ability for anybody to get at the food. You remove the weight, it pops back up. Lightweight birds don't depress it and they can feed away to their heart's content. There are 
also feeders that turn away big birds. Here is an example of one of our, uh, this is a 20 inch classic feeder. And you'll notice this has a built-in baffle and the height from the baffle to the perch keeps um, certain undesirables out. Um, larger birds like jays uh, can't get under here, they can't fit. So that's another way to control what types of birds that you are attracting. So I'm curious if you would please let me know what is your favorite kind of feeder or what kinds of feeders have you had the best results with? Please let us know in the chat. We're curious for your feedback. So now that we have an understanding of the different types of bird feeders, let's find out which feeders attract which birds. I will hold up the feeder and we will see what birds come our way. If you can identify the bird before it gets there, go ahead and post that in the chat. So let's start from the top, first of all, with a seed tube feeder. This will cater to smaller birds, birds perch and feed uh, from the ports. Um, you may have seen this uh, particular bird on one of our past bird walks. It is actually a mountain chickadee and uh, it would perch on here for a little seed picnic. Okay, so tube feeders are good for birds like the mountain chickadee. Thistle feeder. This attracts birds who specifically enjoy uh, thistle and birds like this uh, finch when he's perched correctly. And um, <laughs> look, there's one enjoying the thistle right now. So thistle cedars, thistle feeders attract uh, goldfinches. Yes, we're doing great. Okay, a hopper feeder. Hopper feeders usually will attract this kind of bird, uh, plus a lot of other ones. Again, remember um, these attract wide variety of birds, but a bird you might commonly see uh, would be this Stellar's Jay. And uh, again, one of the things I like about these feeders that we've shown so far that aren't very specific is they will attract a variety of birds, but we're highlighting some of the uh, specific ones. Okay, a platform feeder, it will, as we mentioned before, attract a variety of different sized birds. Here's a, a rather large, uh, apparently well-fed dove um, that is able to pretty easily uh, get on this platform. And uh, again, that's actually a morning dove. Uh, that's another one you would see on this particular feeder. Moving on to suet feeders. Some of the birds you might see snacking on a suet feeder are ones that are especially fond of nuts like the nuthatches, the brown creepers, the chickadees, like we mentioned before, a variety of woodpeckers. And you can see here our little friend is a northern flicker. This is a red shafted uh, northern flicker. And uh, I see these all the time on my suet cages. They love the suet. All right, I need a cylinder feeder, please. So these are good. Again, variety of birds, but goldfinches, smaller songbirds, chickadees, and uh, little guys like this, who is a pygmy nuthatch, uh, would be especially fond of this kind of feeder. And um, that is an awfully huge pygmy <laughs> nuthatch. All right, so maybe you had a chance to identify some of those birds. So we have selected our feeder based on the types of birds we want to attract or discourage uh, and perhaps our budget as well. I, I might have uh, forgotten to mention that as the feeders get bigger, they typically get more expensive and the more 
durably they're built, um, they tend to be more expensive, but that's an investment you make and ultimately over the long haul, they are cheaper. So now we're going to talk about placement. This is step number two, where to place your feeder. Placement is important because it directly impacts how many and what kind of birds show up. It also impacts if or how much mess you may have to clean up. So when you're placing feeders, one thing I encourage you to do is to look up and down. Thank you, Joy, very helpful. We look up because we're looking for cover that protects the birds, whether it's the cover of a platform feeder, whether it is a cover of a tree or bushes, we wanna look up and ideally we want something to provide cover and protection from predatory birds. Also, whenever you can, it's good to place the feeder close to cover, if not underneath it, because you wanna provide a place where birds can easily escape danger, where they can fly off and be safe. We also look down because that's where spilt seed shells and waste will fall. And if you have a deck or some other feature you want to keep clean or clear of waste, you probably want to avoid putting a feeder over it. So you can reposition the feeder uh, to an, another place and make uh, the maintenance a little bit easier. It's important uh, to keep feeders close together when you can. Um, they don't have to be social and stay six feet apart like we're doing these days. Um, but there's this idea of safety in numbers. And I've noticed in my yard that the more feeder ports that I have, the more feeders I have closer, to number, uh, closer together, the number of birds tends to increase almost exponentially in that there are a lot more birds that tend to be attracted um, when their friends are around. I think they feel uh, safer uh, with those extra numbers. Also remember, they've done scientific research and six, is the important number because six is the number of feeders that have been determined to be the most ideal number in a given backyard. So if you have less than six feeders, you have a ways to go. Uh, if you have more than six feeders, we're not gonna penalize you. Okay, placement, height, and distance of your feeder is important as well. You wanna obviously place the feeder away from cats and perhaps squirrels uh, reach, a squirrel's reach, uh, if you don't want to specifically support the squirrels. Some people wanna support the squirrels, so then don't worry about that. But squirrels can uh, climb down most anything. They can also jump a good uh, six feet or so. Um, they are impressive acrobats, so keep that in mind. Uh, you can use a pole mount or staffs to raise up the feeders. And you wanna make sure that your feeder is easy to reach and to fill. You can use hooks like this one. If you have a feeder that's maybe a bit out of the way, you can use a hook like this. It mounts on a pole or broom or something. You can stick it way up high uh, easily and take it down to fill it. All right, let's continue to talk just for a moment about minimizing uh, the mess because uh, here at Chirp, we have people come in uh, sometimes we tend to be uh, bird therapists and help people solve their wild bird related problems. And the mess is something that people sometimes complain about. And there are some specific reasons why you might be getting mess. First of all, you wanna buy a high quality seed. If you buy cheap seed, it's wasteful and more messy and most of it's probably gonna end up on the ground. And why is that? It's because birds have developed this uh, need to feed quickly and this ability to assess the quality of their food. So when they're feeding at a feeder, they're able to sort through the seeds and they're able to throw out cheap seed to the ground um, because they can measure um, the quality of the seed and the fat content on the fly. And they've developed this, it, it is amazing. Uh, they have developed this ability to uh, do that uh, because they have to feed quickly um, and move on. Uh, it's a small earthquake, nothing to worry about. So 
you want to buy cheap seed if you um, want your birds to do more work and make um, more mess. Um, but it's important to, I believe, be kind to your backyard birds and buy them high quality seed. Ultimately, it saves you money uh, and time. All right, so you've selected your feeder, you've found a place for it, but what happens when the weather starts to get bad? What feeders are best suited for harsher weather? Depending on where you live in the country, this is an important question. So let's find out as we go through step number three, feeders and the various seasons. Thank you, Joy. An important element of feeder selection is the durability. I talked about this a little bit briefly. You can tell a feeder's durability by how well it is made, how easy it is to clean, how easy it is to repair, and often it's price. There's usually a relationship between quality and price. If you buy a lower quality feeder, there's some things you need to be mindful of, and that is that UV rays can damage the plastic, and it can turn a feeder uh, yellow or brown. Here, here's an example from someone's yard who will remain nameless of a feeder that didn't fare too well. And it was supposed to be, or at one time it was clear and you can see it's totally yellowed. It's completely opaque. Um, it cracks easily. And that would be an example of a feeder that's not going to uh, hold up well. To ensure that you get a durable feeder, uh, first tip is to buy American. Most feeders from American brands can be repaired. Good uh, ones that we've had good results with are the Droll Yankee and the Bird Choice lines of feeders. Um, if you uh, come to us, we can usually get those feeders fixed for you, often uh, for free. They're very good about uh, supporting them. Uh, feeders should last a long time if you get a good quality one. It should be a good investment. Uh, some of our most durable feeders are made from 100% recyclable plastic, 100% recycled. And here, here is an example of one. The platform feeder that I showed you before is made out of uh, recycled plastic as well. The cool thing about that is not only are you getting plastic bottles out of the landfill, but you are also left with a feeder that won't crack or fade or peel or warp. And uh, our feeders, like this one I showed you earlier, uh, it took 50 water bottles to make this particular feeder. So that not only is durable, but helps you feel better about your feeder purchase. Another thing, if you live in an area with especially harsh <laughs> um, weather or at high altitude, like we have here in Big Bear Lake, we're at 7,000 feet, there's not as much ozone, we get um, harsh snowy winters. Um, those uh, durable feeders are important up here as well uh, because the sun really beats down on them and wood feeders, frankly, just do not last long up here. So some people may be tempted to take feeders inside during bad weather, but the reality is birds need our support most in the winter and depending on where you live, the winter weather plays a role. So if you're in a mild climate like Southern California, you can get away with bird feeders that aren't specifically uh, weatherproof. But as I mentioned, if you live in harsh weather, uh, like we have here in Big Bear Lake in an alpine zone, uh, the weather resistant feeders are going to be well worth the investment. Okay, another thing to keep in mind with weatherproofing are there are attachments like baffles that help cover or protect uh, the seed. And here's a nice big baffle. It also can help keep squirrels away, but it also keeps um, moisture out of the feeder as well. Thank you, Joy. There are specific uh, winter or weather uh, resistant feeders. I have one down here. This one's designed to be completely waterproof completely sealed on the top. And it's got a little place here where the birds can land and then they can get up at the seed up here, but this is completely enclosed. So you don't have to worry about the seed getting wet. Also remember that our good old standby feeder that is important in the winter and stands up to the winter weather is our suet cage. It's just a 
chunk of fat in it and it does really well in the weather. So please resist the temptation to put your feeders inside uh, during the winter, keep them up for your bird pals to enjoy year round, especially during the winter when they need the support the most. Okay, on to step number four, our final step of finding feeder, feeders for our feathered friends. Say that fast 10 times. Step number four, how to clean your feeder. So you got your feeder up, birds are going crazy. Important responsibility is to keep your feeders clean. Uh, you want to do this because it helps minimize the transmission of diseases and also preventative cleaning just helps prevent the buildup of uh, fat and gunk and all of that kind of stuff. At the very least, you should clean your feeders in the spring when you bring them out, or that was a trick question because you shouldn't be bringing them out. You should have left them up all winter, right? <laughs> uh, so you would do it in the spring and then again in the fall before you put them away. No, you don't put them away. You leave them out. But anyway, spring and the fall, and the longer you wait, frankly, the harder it is to clean. So it, good preventative cleaning goes a long way. The design of the feeder though is important for cleaning. And again, there's a relationship between the quality of the feeder, the cost and how easy it is to clean. Here's an example. This is our Clever Clean tube feeder. And it's got this really easy ability where you can just unscrew, I can do it quickly and pull off the bottom. So it just screws and clicks into place. It, it's really just backyard birdie magic, right? So here's how to clean your feeder when it's time to clean it. First of all, I like to get a big container, maybe like a trash can, and I will fill it up with a combination of mostly water and then a natural cleaning solution that includes uh, dish soap and vinegar. The vinegar is a natural disinfectant and the soap helps loosen the gunk, especially if you're using a high quality seed, you're going to have some fat residue and it helps get rid of that. You definitely want to avoid harsh chemicals like bleach. I like to let the feeder soak in the cleaning solution, maybe out in the sun, even for several hours, just makes the cleaning easier. And then when I'm cleaning, I like to use a brush, perhaps like Oh, what kind of action going on here? I like to use uh, a brush like this is good. This one's got a big, long handle on it where you can get deep in larger feeders. Um, we also have smaller uh, brushes that uh, get into the hard to clean places. This one's especially good for hummingbird uh, feeders and um, another uh, brush option. Uh, to help get everything nice and clean. If you have a plastic feeder, a clear plastic feeder, you might want to be mindful to not scratch the plastic. So one of those Scotch-Brite um, non-scratching cleaning sponges can be good. After you've got it all scrubbed and cleaned, rinse it and let it dry, making sure there's no chemical residue left on it, and then fill it and hang it back up. I always like to mark my calendar when I'm supposed to clean my feeders. So if I just cleaned it, I'll mark it for uh, the next interval of when I'm going to clean it. At least twice a year, some people will do it monthly. All right, so congratulations. You now know how to find the perfect backyard feeder. You have a good overview of the different types of feeders, what they do, how they work, who they attract. So let's review. Step one, select a bird feeder. Step two, Look high and low as you place your feeder in an easy to reach location, safe from predators. Step number three, keep the feeders up all year with covers and web proofing as needed. Step number four, clean your feeder ideally monthly. Remember, once you complete all of these steps, you wanna avoid the dreaded empty feeder syndrome at all costs. And here's why. It takes birds a while to find newly put up or filled feeders. And when you let your feeders go dry, the birds go elsewhere for their food. And the longer you let the feeders sit empty, the longer it takes for birds to come back. 
also there's this human guilt element. And I know I feel bad when my feeders are empty. Uh, I feel like I'm letting my bird friends uh, down. Um, keep in mind that the decline in bird population in the last 50 years, 30% of our wild birds have disappeared. So I feel I need to do everything I can to help these birds and hopefully you do too. So we covered a lot, but maybe you still have questions. So before we go, I would be happy to answer any questions you had throughout today's presentation. Tori, what are our chirpers asking? Are there any questions or are we done? Yeah, no, we actually have some great questions oh, good. coming good, in. Good, good. Okay, let's go ahead and get these. All right, so Carol asked, what about the squirrel stealing the bird seed? And I feel like you answer that question. There's a lot of different ways we can prevent squirrels from getting the seed. Yes, okay, so on the, on the squirrel issue, some people love squirrels, some people hate squirrels. There can be a lot of squirrel angst out there. And so there's lots of things you can do um, if you are uh, less than supportive of the squirrels, um, your placement is gonna be important. You wanna put the feeder in a place where the squirrels can't get to it. Um, also, you want to keep uh, underneath your feeder fairly clean because, um, and use high quality seed because the more seed that ends up on the ground, the more you're going to attract uh, the squirrels. But whether you get a specific squirrel proof feeder like this one that I showed you, or you uh, put up a baffle, um, the location is probably the biggest factor. Um, but then there's other things that you can do. And we have a whole host of different squirrel proof uh, feeders as well. Uh, so that is the best way. Some people will resort to what I'll call chemical deterrence. There's sprays and powders that you can add to bird seed that have cayenne pepper that mm, have mixed results. Um, personally, I think the mechanical preventions, the physical preventions are going to be better. As long as you have it far enough away from a source where a bird or a squirrel can jump off and you have a way to keep the... Um, squirrels from climbing down like a baffle that I showed you, uh, that should help keep the squirrels at bay. Oh, one other thing on squirrel prevention. There's another approach to deterring them and that is attracting them somewhere else. So one strategy we'll recommend as well is feed the squirrels somewhere else away from your squirrel feeders. That will keep them busy, that will satisfy them and that typically causes them to leave the bird's food alone. All right, what else? All right, we have some great questions coming in. So Liz was saying she hangs up her suet feeder and no one comes. So she asked, is the cage type? She has the Home Depot suet. She's wondering if you have any suggestions to bring the birds to her suet feeder. Right. So um, again, not an uncommon issue in the beginning. You put your feeder up and you wait expectantly for them to all come flying on in. And sometimes it takes a while. I've had it take weeks for birds to find my particular uh, feeders, um, depending on where I had and what kind of birds I was trying to uh, attract. Um, in one case, I waited a whole season for bluebirds to show up for mealworms. I don't quite know why. Um, all my other feeders were filled with other birds, but the bluebirds just didn't come. And then the next season they came in droves. And I can't exactly explain that. But anyway, um, you need to be patient and you need to make sure your placement is good and you need to make sure you have good, high quality, fresh seed. If you have seed that's been sitting out a long time, uh, might be uh, time to refresh it. Uh, the other thing is that you probably will get better results with multiple uh, feeders as well. So that would be another thing to do. Uh, maybe invest in another second uh, inexpensive uh, feeder to put up and that might bring them as well but check your placement, make sure your food is fresh uh, and then be patient, they, they will come. Great. All right, what else? We have a question about platform feeders. So our friends, they say, I have a couple seed tube feeders and a sock with thistle. I'm curious about how to mount a platform feeder on a pole, how high should it be? Mm -hmm. And also Liz asked, is there an attachment tray so the seed doesn't get pushed out? Yes. Great, great questions. So a platform feeder like this can be mounted a variety of ways. So you can see there's actually a bracket on the bottom for a pole mount. And uh, we have lots of different types of heavy duty poles that you can screw or bang into the ground. And typically those are um, about 
head height. Um, you can get different lengths, but four to six-ish feet. Again, if you're concerned about squirrels, um, you want to keep it a good five feet uh, off the ground. Uh, so that would be an option. We also have brackets, and brackets are available from your favorite wild bird store, if that doesn't happen to be chirp, uh, that will allow you to mount platform feeders on um, wooden posts or rails of decks, um, lots of different ways to do it. Uh, you can even um, get feet for some of the platform feeders and put it on the ground. What else, Tori? All right, so we have a question about deterring some undesirables. How do you get ants away from a hummingbird feeder? Yes. And then how do you avoid getting rats getting into the seed feeders at night? Right, okay. Let's do the hummingbird one first. Depending on the type of feeder that you have, and actually we were remiss in not showing hummingbird feeders. Oh. <laughs> we'll do that next time. <laughs> um, but hummingbird feeders, uh, depending on which kind you get, they often have a reservoir built into them. And the reservoir, um, you would have the, the hanging pole uh, that you would hang it from. And then there's a reservoir that you can fill with water and that will help keep the ants away. Another option is that between the hanger and whatever hook or wherever you're hanging it on, um, you can get uh, ant moats. Uh, they can either be water filled um, or they can be uh, chemical uh, with um, a uh, nature based, I think it's called pathyrin or something like that. I think it's made from marigolds um, that will um, deter them. But basically you're uh, pre preventing the ants from crawling all the way through with either some type of uh, water or uh, liquid chemical that will keep them from crawling um, to uh, the nectar, which they of course love. And depending on the hummingbird feeder that you got, it may have a moat built into it. Here's a pro tip. If you have a moat, put a drop of vegetable oil on the top and that creates a layer that slows the evaporation of the water so you don't have to refill the moat as often. And the other question related to that was rats, rats right? Yeah. So um, again, a lot of the things that work with squirrel proofing the feeders will work with rats. Um, the baffles, the uh, feeders like this one. Um, if there was a rat on here, the weight would uh, keep it from uh, getting at them. Um, one thing to keep uh, in mind with any kind of rodent population is uh, try not to let them get established and try and keep your area clean. Again, a high quality feed will help with that, but some of it just gets down to basic cleaning and not letting it um, build up. Again, it depends on your philosophy. Obviously, a lot of people aren't fond of rats. Um, at my house, I've got a lot of chipmunks and ground squirrels, and I try to be an equal opportunity feeder, so I try and support them as well. All right, I'd say we have we have time for like two more questions. All right, two more. All right, make it good. So ones. here we go. Focusing on hummingbird feeders. Yes. They asked how or do we take them down in fall or do we leave them up in winter? Okay, so there's a common misconception that if you leave your hummingbird feeders up, you're going to prevent the hummingbirds from migrating. That is false. Birds, especially hummingbirds, migrate based on a combination of uh, time of the year, length of the day, weather, and food sources. And your feeder, uh, your hummingbird feeder, will not keep them around um, longer than they choose to be. Uh, depending on where you live, um, you probably want to bring it in in the winter if there's a, a chance of it freezing. But if you're in that situation, you also want to give it, get it back up fairly um, soon in the spring. And, and here's why. They call hummingbirds nature's postmen. And they memorize feeding spots. And they go from spots they've known previously uh, each day, um, each season. And what you don't want to do is provide an intermittent source so that they spend energy and waste energy coming to your feeder only to find that it's not there or that it's empty. So consistency uh, is important and take your hummingbird feeder down uh, after you've maybe noticed a decline in the hummingbird um, population coming to your feeder. I tend to err on leaving it up longer because I know the birds are going to move on when they're going to move on regardless of whether I have the feeder up or not. 
and then I pay attention to the weather because we reach a point up here where they'll start freezing and I want to avoid that. All right. So this is the final question. Last one. <laughs> Some say not to feed the birds in good weather as they can find food in nature. Do you agree? What do you think? So that's a good question. Um, people have thought, I think with good reason, that by feeding birds, like if you feed bears or raccoons or something like that, other animals, that you're going to make them dependent, you're going to throw the natural web of life off. And they've actually studied that. And they've determined that with the exception of the possibility of transmitting disease through dirty feeders, that's one thing we need to take into account. And that's why you want to keep your feeders clean. Uh, birds do not grow dependent on uh, bird feeders um, as a food source. So that has been uh, scientifically tracked and um, proven, I guess. But the other part to keep in mind is, and, and the way I justify or rationalize uh, feeding uh, birds even beyond that, aside from the enjoyment and, and all of that great stuff, is that with that decline in population that I mentioned earlier, with um, 30 million birds being lost in uh, 50 years, one third of our bird population, um, I believe is the right statistic, that that kind of decline is um, frightening, uh, frankly. And it is important, I think, that we give the birds whatever helping hand we can. And that um, if that means that there may be, um, if it even is the case, a little more dependent on us, but if they can more easily have uh, more clutches of eggs and have more babies out there, that's gonna increase the bird population and we'll have more birds uh, out there to go forage uh, naturally as well. But the short answer is um, through scientific study, they determined that birds are, do not become dependent on um, bird, bird seed, bird feeding, and that they are very resilient. Okay, so I wanna thank you for those great questions. If we were unable to get to your question, uh, feel free to email us or call us here at CHIRP. And with that, thank you again for joining us. And I'm gonna ask Tori to fly us home. Well done, all of you backyard birders. Did you know that not only are there a variety of bird feeders, but there's also a variety of seeds, mixes, suets, and cylinders to help you attract birds to your backyard. So Mark, I saw you posted a question about all the different types of seed. Well, join us next month, Mark and everyone else, because on September 23rd at 4 p.m., we're gonna talk you through how to find the seed you need. But you don't have to wait till next month to hang out with us at Chirp Nature Center. You can visit our store in Big Bear Lake Village. You can join us on our in-person walks and you can go to all of our other virtual walks and talk events. So. I know it's a lot of information. It's a lot of fun we're gonna to have together. So you can always go to chirpforbirds.com for all of the information. Okay, so here's the moment that you've been waiting for. It is now time for you to test your bird feeder brain knowledge and go to chirpforbirds.com slash quiz to take our how-to quiz. Look, I even made a sign. Super simple, super easy way to get there. This is how you get entered in to win that grand prize, right? chirpforbirds.com slash quiz easy and the grand prize that we will be giving away to one lucky winner is this beautiful six port feeder and remember how randy mentioned this is a great way to start backyard birding so whether you're going to add this to the multitude of feeders in your backyard or you're going to get started right now this is the perfect feeder to get you acquainted with your backyard birds all right and don't forget we also want to just thank you so much for joining us here today so for all of those who take the quiz you will receive this beautiful chirp coaster. And this is free, it's a free thank you gift is a way to say, you know what, every time you're outside in the morning, sipping your tea or coffee, enjoying your backyard birds, chirp is here to support you. Don't forget that. All right, so you have the link to the quiz, it should be posted into the chats. Don't forget, I'll hold up the sign one more time. Chirperbirds.com slash quiz, go ahead and take that two minutes maybe one minute if you're super fast quiz and we will see you so soon thank you again for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you again bye